Hi y'all, it's Charlene from the Crafty Art Shack and we're back here today with another challenge video. So let's get to the craft desk and get started. Let's go. We'll tell you more about that challenge in just a minute, but here we go with DIY number one. Okay, for this DIY, you're gonna need one of these little wooden trucks like this. This is the one I'm actually using in this video and I'm gonna take all the parts off of it and then I'm gonna take out a piece of mini blinds and I'm going to take those parts and trace them out with my little silver marker and on the mini blind because my blinds are dark. You could use black if your blinds were white or a lighter color. And then I traced out all these parts and I cut them out for this little truck project. This is real easy to cut out. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those little tin pans. Now this is a piece I've been saving and I like to save those rolled edges. If you follow me any on YouTube, you will see when I do my little trucks, I like to put this metal up from this tin pan on my projects because I think it just makes it look awesome. Now what I'm doing is I'm seeing where I want that, uh, what's it called? That the, it's like not the fender but it's the thing that sits on the side of the truck oh I know what it's called I can't remember anyway I'm getting all my little parts together now what I'm going to do next is I'm also going to trace out the little bumper on the front and the one on the back and I'll do the wheels also now after I had all my little parts out for this truck, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting it. I took out all my colors. I took out outrageous orange, chocolate sprinkles, some white, and some gray, and I'm going to get ready to paint this project. Now you guys, where I took those parts off, there's pieces missing, but that's okay because when we put the parts back on, those are going to be covered up. But now what I'm doing is I'm putting half chocolate and half white on my brush and I'm going around the edges of my truck and you see how I did that one first stroke where I did it over the fender and then I'm going to just paint back and forth until I get that good and blended then I'll go back and pick up more chocolate and more white and go over the next section of the truck and I just continue this until I get the truck painted throughout this whole section. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but uh, if you watch the video, you can pretty much understand what I'm doing. And see when it goes down, you see the chocolate more, and then I just blend. That helps give you that shading that you need when you start going around your little windows and doors and all kinds of stuff like that. And now that we've got our little truck painted, I'm going to go back and add some darkness up at the top of just solid chocolate because that's where I'm going to put my uh, little rails. Now this little pumpkin I painted with, uh, this one I'm painting with orange and white just like I did the truck. Mix your brush half and half and that'll give you that shading that you need. That little gray pumpkin I did the same way with the gray and the white and then after that, I'm showing you that I'm going to use the uh, black chalk paint from the Dollar Tree to paint in my little tires. And you can actually draw these in so that you get these nice and round. Now the next thing you're going to need is one of these Farmer's Markets calendars. And you're going to use the little uh, Happy Fall, yeah, Happy Harvest. Then I went out and got some little twigs from my yard and you're going to just glue those to the top of your little pumpkin so that that will be your little stem. Oh, you guys, this turned out so, so cute. And you see I've got all my parts laying there ready to go onto this piece. Now I'm going to put my little bumpers on and then I'm going to put all my other little pieces. I'm going to start adding them in. Here's my rear bumper going on. I'm just putting these on with hot glue. And here I go. I speeded it up a little bit. I took the little wooden rounds and put my metal pieces on those. 
then I glued my fenders on and I glued my side rail on and then I glued my little sign that goes on the side of the truck onto a piece of blind so that it stood up off the truck then I'm going in and doing my doodling all the way around on this project with my uniball gel pen and then I'm taking my fine and sharpie marker and adding some more details to this. You guys the details are in the finishing of your project. Now I'm going to take and put some glue all over the back of this and I'm going to stick a piece of paper where the windows are supposed to be then I'm going to cover that and then stick it down on the brown paper so that the back is finished off. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little berries that I wrapped around a pencil to get it to look like that and add that to the back of my truck. And then I'm going to add some uh, leaves and I took one of those little pumpkins right there that I got off of something. I don't remember what I got it off of but I divided it in half and I'm going to glue it to the back of that to make it look like more pumpkins in the back and add some leaves. Okay, let's talk about today's challenge. Today's challenge is hosted by Lisa from Our Gray House and Sarah from uh, Jujubee DIY. And its guest host today is Emily from Farm Charm Chic. And this challenge happens every fourth Friday of the month. And if you would like to join in, go over there and talk to one of these ladies. There's also a playlist in the description box below, along with all the descriptions of the items used in this video. Y'all go check out those ladies on the playlist and check these ladies out as well. And let's get on with the next DIY. And here we go with DIY number two. Now for this DIY, you're going to need... Uh, several different paint brushes because we're going to do some painting and then you're going to need three uh, pumpkins now you can get pumpkins like this from anywhere but these happen to come from the thrift store because uh, that's where I found them and they were 99 cents that's what they were marked and I got them half off so now what you want to do is you want to take your paintbrush and what I'm doing is I'm you got to get all your paints out and laid out on the plate. Now what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that I laid out three colors because this time I'm not painting with two colors, I'm painting with three and because I got a wider brush. So I'm going to run that right through that orange. Now I slowed this down because I want to take time. Some people ask me to show them the painting and how I do this technique. So I just go back and forth until I get my brush loaded with plenty of paint. And then as I get ready to go around the outer edges, you have to decide which way you want your lighter color to be. Now I've got a white on one side and I've got a, uh, I believe it was yellow on the other side. And whatever direction you paint with, the next time you use your brush, make sure, and you go back and fill it up with paint, you want to make sure you fill it back up the same way you did before with the colors on the same side in your paintbrush otherwise your colors are going to really start mixing together and you want to create some blending now I'm going back in and making my second stroke you saw how I made that first one we'll see when I make that second one how it creates my little ridges for my pumpkin for me automatically this mix is so easy you guys Now you're going to use this technique on all your pumpkins. Now when you do the other side you want to make sure you have it flipped the same way you did on the previous side when we made that very first stroke. Now I'm going all the way up and around and then I'll go back in and create my second stroke the same way. Now you just keep doing that until you get to the center of your pumpkin and see how it automatically creates all of your little lines. Now you're going to do this no matter which color you're using. You're going to use three colors on each one of these pumpkins to paint each one. Now I paint each pumpkin a different color but I use the same method to do it. Here we are with the brown pumpkin and I'm showing you how I painted my stem in. Now I've got brown and I've got white on that. Now you want to go down when you start doing around the top edge of that pumpkin at the bottom of the stem and you want to create little lines in there so it looks like it's just it looks more natural. 
and you'll do this for each one of your pumpkins no matter what you color the stem you're going to use two colors to paint your stem not three now you want to make sure you paint your sides now i wasn't too happy with the color that my brown pumpkin turned out when i first painted it if you like that color that works for you use that but i went and added orange and brown together to do this next part and you know if you don't like what it looks like just do something else and repaint it it's just paint and i'm gonna go and make some little orange and brown strokes on each one of my ribs to bring this pumpkin out more and the only reason why i did it on this one is because it was uh, brown and i needed more color in it here's our little blue pumpkin and i'm putting a little brown stem on it so this one will be easier to show you see how i'm creating those strokes where it looks like it's frayed at the ends when you do that you push your paintbrush down at the top and when you get down to the bottom of that pumpkin you're going to start lifting your brush up and that creates that type of stroke now i went all the way around the edges of this pumpkin with some brown and i added brown highlights to this blue pumpkin you guys i love to paint and here's my orange pumpkin and i did go back and add some brown highlights to that but here's one of my favorite things to do also after all of these are dry i'm going in here and i'm going to put some little highlights in for my pumpkin and my stem with my sharpie extra fine sharpie marker i'll also use the uniball gel pen on this and this turns out so cute i do this to all three pumpkins you guys you don't have to be neat with these little lines you can be messy do them randomly it just do what's you i don't make straight lines when i do this i don't try to be perfect I try to be, I just run it along the edges. Now what you see me doing here is I'm going to go back and rough up some edges all the way around on all three pumpkins. Do some splatter painting on each one of the pumpkins and then I take and cover each one of the pumpkins with brown paper on the back side to finish them off. And the next thing I do is I lay all three pumpkins together. Now I haven't glued them together at this point. I'm going to put this grateful a leather piece that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to place it on the front of the pumpkin. I'm going to glue all three pumpkins together and then I'm going to start adding some other little pieces. I'm going to add the grateful sign. I'm going to add some raffia. I'm going to add some flowers and if you see up at the top of the screen you'll see I have laid out all my pieces that I'm going to use at what place in each one of these pumpkins. And we'll see the rest of this at the final reveal. And we'd like to take this time to thank our subscribers. We love you bunches. Thanks for subscribing to every one of you. We really appreciate you helping us grow our channel. And here we go with DIY number three. Now this one is a very special one. We are going to be making a little wheelbarrow out of blinds. Now you see that piece laying there? That is actually a blind. And how I created that is I took one of these long blinds that I have that I used in one of these other videos. You'll see it pop up here in just a second. Now what I did is I took one of those blinds and I heated it up with a heat gun. And then I'm going to take that little tray that I use in my drawer for stuff and I'm going to bend that around that to give me that shape that you first saw now once i get it bent bent like i want it i'm measuring it out to see what i want it to what i need to do next now this next step you could do first and what i'm doing is i'm drawing a, a section of the blind on a piece of paper and i'm creating a pattern because i want my wheelbarrow to have a little dip at the end right before you uh, yeah at the ends of the tips that I don't know how to explain this but but show you in the video I'm making the edges of the sides of my wheelbarrow and I'm using a cup to get my my shapes and my roundness so I can kind of get guesstimate what I want to do with this 
and there I go. Once I get all the little circles and everything like I want them, then I'm creating the roundness of the shape that I want. And then that's what I'm going to cut out for my pattern. And I'm going to leave this on the blind. This would be much easier to do if you took and did it before you ever bent your blind. But I didn't think about that before I was doing it because I was creating it. So y'all get the benefit of that, knowing that ahead of time. Do this step beforehand. Now here's my pattern and I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to take my little Sharpie marker, silver one, and trace this out and trim that off. Now you guys, if you write on your stuff with Sharpie marker, if you use alcohol and a cotton swab, you can just wipe that stuff off. Now what I'm doing is I'm making me some little slats for the bottom of my wheelbarrow that's going to help attach everything together. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of these blinds in half and then I'm going to cut that piece in half again and that is going to make my uh, little handles and hold my wheel in the front and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And the next thing I do is I have this little uh, mason jar lid that I'm going to, I thought I was going to use for my wheel, but I decided on something different. And I'm checking to see if my little pieces are long enough, and they are. So the next thing I'm going to do is take and heat up the ends of this so that I can bend it in little uh, like L shape. And there you go, you see me bending them. And I mean, this stuff is really easy to bend once you heat it up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the edges down on these little pieces. And I'm going to drill me some holes in the front for my wheels to attach. Sorry, you guys. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take me a little strip and I'm going to make my wheel. Now, I'm going to heat that up and bend it and place it inside a mason jar lid. That's going to give me my perfect round wheel. And then I'm going to let it overlap and then I'm going to cut it off and see when you put it back in the jar, it is going to fit perfectly in the mason jar lid, not the jar. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm trying to create the center of my wheel. Now, these two little pieces came off of the blinds where the string goes in and I saved them because they had a little slat in them. Now what I did is roughed up the edges and I'm going to put some hot glue on this and glue these two together. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm taking a, that's a piece of wire off of a floral stem from some flowers that I had and I just put it through there because it fit through there nice and perfect and it's bendable and it's going to work for everything that we want. Now here I'm gluing my two pieces together and if you notice it has little slats all the way through. That's what we're going to put our, uh, what do you call them, uh, the little spindles through that hold the tire out or the spokes, the spokes, that's what it's called. <laughs> now. I'm going to glue my tire together. Now I'm putting hot glue on it right now temporarily just because I'm not sure exactly what parts I'm going to, how I'm going to put this together. I'm still trying to figure it out at this point. So I do go back and put some E6000 in there and I sand those little edges off so that if it pokes back up, it'll be all right. But by the time we get all the little spokes in this, it's going to work fine. And then I took some of these little pieces and I had to trim them just a little to get the spokes to fit in the little holes and this is actually going to have four spokes in it. Now that I got my four spokes in I'm going to adjust this so that I cut off and all the extra pieces that I don't need and leave so that I could have it centered in the middle of my little wheel. Get all of those in there and glue together on the wheel. Then the next thing I'm going to do is make my little stand for the back of my little wheelbarrow. Now I took those two little short pieces that I cut earlier and I am going to bend them into the shape that I need them to be to hold the wheelbarrow up in the back. The first thing you have to do is you have to make a V. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to fold the ends in to make them flat. You keep seeing me go off camera because I don't want to put the 
heat gun around my computer. And then you come back in and you bend the other little side. So both sides have got to uh, be bent in and they got to be flat so they attach to the bottom of your wheelbarrow. Well, what you see me doing here is I'm getting ready to attach the everything together. And there's my little wheel. Now you guys, I went back and that's a four spoke wheel, not a six spoke wheel because I changed it out. But it's the same method for making it. Now I was making sure everything's going to fit and next thing we got to do is we got to make the bottom of the wheelbarrow. So what I'm doing is I'm laying out my little piece that I bent originally, the first piece I bent, and I'm marking out how long I need it to be and the curve for this front. And then I'm going to take my uh, miter shears and trim this off and I'll do this until I've got enough pieces to fill in across the bottom. This is what it should look like when you get finished and you'll want to make sure that you do any trimming that you need to do at this point before you attach anything together. Now you're going to attach these three pieces together and I took and cut another blind piece down for this because the original ones I had I used them for something else on making this. And so I'm going to put some E6000 down or some of that uh, glue from the Dollar Tree, the fix-all or whatever it's called, liquid cement. And then I'm going to put hot glue on there too and I'm going to attach this together because I don't want this to come apart. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your fix-all or cement stuff from the Dollar Tree. You're going to put it along the edges of your blind. Now this is only going to be just a little bit of glue. It's, we're going to do something else to sturdy this even more in a few minutes. But you're going to put that on. You're going to put some hot glue on as well. And then you're going to stick it down to that, those three pieces that you see laying there and attach it to it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handles and I'm going to punch out little um, holes in the front of my handles and that's the real long ones with the ends bent. And then once you do that, then you have a place for your little spoke to go through for your wheel. So the next thing I did is I wanted, because of where I've glued this together and everything, I wanted to paint my wheel um, black so I painted everything black the inside the outside upside down all sides all sides of this is going to get painted you guys this thing turned out so cute now I wanted to add some more stability to the wheelbarrow itself along those edges and also hide some of the uh, places where it's attached so I took another piece of blind and I cut a fourth of it off and I'm going to bend this just like I did the, the sides of the wheelbarrow. And I'm going to go all the way around the sides, bend it, and put it in place and glue it down. Now, after I got it all glued down, I did take some of these little clamps and hold it in place. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue our little uh, pieces that are going to be the stands on the back of our wheelbarrow. And... I am uh, figuring out where they need to go and then I'm going to glue those in place. And then after I got those glued in place I did put some clips on it because it needed some help to stay where it needed to be until it completely dried. And then the next thing, and you see the purple tape on there, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm seeing how I need to do this next piece. Now where that starts to go into the V it needed more stability right there, so I added a piece on the top and the bottom. Now, when I got through putting this together, I did have to go back and take one of those Dollar Tree cubes and put it in there in this little spot between these two and glue it in because it needed more stability. So I did use hot glue and that fix-all glue or whatever it's called, the cement stuff from the Dollar Tree. And I put it together and then I taped it, but go ahead and glue that little cube in there. You'll see me do that in a few minutes when I start putting uh, the handles on. Now I go back and I take the tape off of this because now it's dry and I'm going to add my wheels to the front. Not wheels, but one wheel. It's one wheel. Now, 
um, I'm putting on my little wheel and I'm seeing how it's turning. Now to keep that space like you need it between the two, I took those little mouse traps that I have been taking apart for other projects and used the little springs. I cut the tips off of them and stuck them in there to separate the wheel from the handles and keep it in place so it didn't ride from one side to the other. Um, I don't know if I put that in the video or not, but anyway... Um, the next thing we are doing is we are getting ready to glue all of this together. Now, see right there where I keep sticking my fingers in that one part? I'm going to go in there and add a little cube because this keeps coming apart right here because it doesn't have enough st stability there. So that's where I put the little cube, come and go back and put that little cube in there to help it out. So here you see me gluing the cube. Go ahead and paint your cube a dark color. After I put this in there, I realized I didn't color it and it was going to show. So I went and took my Sharpie marker and colored it. <laughs> I don't know if I put this on the video or not. And the next thing I did is I glued my handles down. I glued it at the front right there where you see my fingers going on the right before the wheel. And then at the back. And every place that it touched, I put glue and I put some tape on there until it got completely dry. Now I'm going to take and trim off my little floral wire that came off of one of my flowers. And I'm going to be putting it in there to, uh, yeah, I'm doing something. Oh, I'm going to put little buttons on the ends of it. After we finished that part, I cut me out a little stencil to put on the side, and it says fresh, uh, fresh pick pumpkins, and I'm using a little uh, Q-tip, and I'm just dabbing the paint on. Once that dries, I peel this off, and there's my design. Now, I didn't put this design on both sides because, like I said, I want to be able to use this later on in my other projects that I create during the year. Now that we have that done, we're going to make a little platform for our uh, floor foam to sit on because I want to be able to pull this out and reuse it again in another project later on during the year. Now that I've got my foam ready to go, I'm going to add that into the wheelbarrow. I'm going to start by adding little picks to my pumpkins. I sat my little bale of hay. I think I got that hay at Michael's. And I put my little pumpkins in there. And then I am going to just start adding other pieces of floral um, flowers and fall looking flowers to this project to complete it. And we'll see the rest of this at the end of the reveal. And here's a quick glimpse of it right before we get ready to send it to reveal. And again, today, you guys, the host of this is Lisa from Our Gray House, Sarah from GGB DIY, and Emily from Farm Charm Chic. This is a fourth Friday open challenge. Happens every Friday of the month. Y'all go check them out. Check out those ladies on the playlist. They are so creative, and you don't want to miss out on this. Here's all the other places you can find us on social media. Go check us out. And here's the final reveal, you guys. These are so cute. What are we gonna do? 
Alright y'all, we're back from the craft desk and these items turned out so cute. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out those ladies on the playlist because they are doing some awesome work it's with and you yeah. today. We hope you join us for the next episode of the Crafty Art Shack. Subscribe. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe. It's free. And click that notification bell so you know when our next video goes up. And to all of our subscribers, thank you for subscribing and leaving your comments because we really appreciate every comment that you leave. And we will see you in the next video. We'll see you later. Bye! Done by somebody else. And see it. Do it. We create it. I don't know. <laughs> Hi y'all, it's Charlene from the Crafty Art Shack and we're here today with three old tiny crafting videos. Or yeah, not videos. <laughs> this little ski patrol truck. It just dripped. <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Hi y'all, it's Charlene. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you want me to do what? And to all of our subscribers, thank you for subscribing and leaving your comments because we really appreciate every comment that you leave. And we will see you in the next video. We'll see you later. Bye!